Wolves picked up that win. Definitely so. Thank you very much, gentlemen. One and one, all squared. Uh, in game one, we had a lot to say about the Copenhagen Wolves pick and ban phase. This time, Cadrol at least got his hands on something that he's able to work with. What else did you guys see popping off in that pick and ban? I'm such a big fan of this team composition on this patch, like Sevilla, uh, Lissandro together, and then paired with like a tank that has like movement reliant uh, abilities. I, I like that concept like a lot, and it gives like Crepo just mentioned off. The, uh, desk you put Sivir in the mid lane you just drop it in and then you have like two flanking side lanes that just collapse on the mid lane once you open up the map in the lane swap that should have happened even though Copenhagen Wolves like mess up the lane swap a bit right that um, still didn't really matter because you just yeah the yeah now you say a bit however when however, we were watching it you guys were like yeah yeah we, were, we thought they threw the game by by <laughs> screwing up the lane so before we get into that just I just really want to talk about this comp because the the goal or the mid game point where you arrive is Sivir in the mid lane one through one and then you have double TP potential flanks. It's such a good uh, point to be in. You can arrive at that state by doing two things. Are you go standard lanes and you have Janna Sivir continuously pressure the bot lane tower. You have a uh, utility mid deck can always push and then the play pattern is you push mid roam bot for a five man bot lane party double TP where you kind of force them off the tower get the tower then you swap up and you isolate every tower. Otherwise you can also opt for a very good lane swap and that's what we want to highlight in the first we play how good this lane swap is from Copenhagen Wolves, because despite having really solid uh, 2v2, 1v1 gameplay patterns, if you look at their champion combo here, Janna, Poppy, and Sivir can kill every single minion wave while still kind of hitting the tower if they position correctly. That is, gets you a tempo advantage. So at this point in the replay, if we roll right now, Copenhagen Wolves have a really big tempo advantage if they bounce on this wave, like they actually have too many creeps, so they're taking the tower down too quickly. What they could have done is bounce the wave here for Wicked, so that's what you want to do. Uh, here you see, you know, NATO, Q, W, like these waves evaporate. But the goal in the lane swap is to bounce for your top laner, swap, and use a tempo advantage to be the first team to initiate the swap play. Then you get the next tower. Then you swap back, you take Herald. Then you swap back and you go for a four-man push on a tier two. And because you're always ahead in tempo, the other team has nothing to do than to mirror you because they don't have the wave clear to stop you. If Copenhagen Wolves executed this perfectly, this would have been such a, a beautiful tier two push like four minutes down the line. We can't fault them for it because they're a challenger team, but I'm just such a big fanboy of this comp because I think it's absolutely so genius. For the noobs here, yeah. obviously we saw them pushing that tower. You say it was too fast. What? Yeah, the correct the correct play there is oh. bounce that wave on first tower, send your bot lane to the, to the uh, to the bot lane again mm -hmm. because then you can get Wicked off the farm and you keep your top laner just soaking waves every time either you get the enemy t trundle because now Wicked could be farming and we saw it in the early game Wicked was down 30 CS or something in this lane swap because he was the one always behind and having to catch the waves while the other top laner was freezing and then got pushed off the wave and it was dangerous for him to farm that far yeah he couldn't farm safely and he was he was always the one swapping second instead of initiating the play and just keeping the freezes so it's it would have been such a good play. And despite all that, this is a long run, but even even with all those failures in the early game, once the mid game hit, Copenhagen Wolves just started taking tower after tower after tower for free with this super strong composition. Looking from the outside, I'd say th good on the coach for the pick and ban phase, good on the coach for the idea of the lane swap. It just faltered a little bit because they didn't have that decision making yeah. behind them when the lane swap actually happened. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, he explained it like all points. <laughs> yeah. I can only agree with it. I think um, if Trundle would have just, like in a normal scenario, that l that game would have been over probably because if you just managed to just choke out the jungle and then take the resources away and then if you set that 1-3-1 one, one, once up, it's like there's no coming back really. And you have stronger team fight because Sivir right now, like I really like the champion right now, Sivir, because she is like she has wave clear in the mid lane. She can just do whatever she wants. She has really good team fighting. Her damage output is actually insane. And uh, I really like Sivir comes right now. And yeah, it you know it was Sivir super comp. fed also. Yeah, the, the beauty of that Sivir is that um, as opposed to back in the day when we had Sivir rush at you team fight comps, now we just have Sivir in the mid lane. She can rotate quicker to side lanes if you want to rotate to a tower or just surprise the enemy with on the hunt to make picks. But the cool thing about this comp is that you kind of guarantee two or three pushing lanes. I think it's even slightly better if you have a Trundle instead of Poppy. Poppy gives you a little more flank engage, but Trundle just wins you the late game push on, on one extra lane too. But uh, it's just so versatile. You can play standard lanes, have a good winning play pattern with almost no counter, and or you swap and you have a winning play pattern with um, almost no counter because you just had a hand in tempo. It's just so, so fun to see for me. I heard that before. Just the Silver Comp, no counter. Yeah. <laughs> We're going back full circle to like one year ago. Ah, uh, the Silver Comp memes are back. A link to so the happy. past. A link, a link to the past, yeah. <laughs> um, in any case, 
to round up uh, the two games we saw so far, and especially this one from uh, the Copenhagen Wolves, bad start, but good strategy initially. This puts, uh, puts us back at square one because it was Giants with the good decision making in game one. However, I'm inclined to say, we see the Copenhagen Wolves there discussing that when it comes to in-game decision making, I am more impressed with what Giants did in game one. Yeah, and what was facilitated by the compact opening rules in game two. Yeah, it was a little bit all over the place. Uh, what Giants didn't continue here is mm -hmm. in picks and bans. Giants this game, uh, they banned out Nidalee, Lulu, and Twisted Fate. Whereas in game one, hang on, it was the Lissandra there. Yeah, so they banned out the Lissandra too. So in game one, they banned out all these utility champs from Kedril. And the Azir was off the table too, so his champion pool was ruined and he couldn't play that Quinn to Corky. Right now, he got this Lissandra and that is the style Kedril likes to play. TP, utility, help his team, provide CC. So if now we swap sides again, if Giants can just repeat that, then I think Open Angles may have issues again. Next track. Yeah, I think uh, on blue side, they actually have like a lot more room for the target bands. So I think we just see uh, Lulu, Lissandra, and TF yep. band again. And then you take away like the biggest strength for the enable, like the mid lane enable is like gone. And then what are you going to do? Are you just going to run a Civic comp without one of those hard engage, hard CC mid laners and run the Quinn again? Because I don't think that's going to work out. We'll see because Giants will be on the blue side for this next game. And as the teams regroup for game three, we're going to take a quick break. The series is tied at one and one, so stay tuned.